the profile interview segment this week, I'll be speaking with the newly elected president of the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria, Shewu Muhammad, and his executives bring to fore what workers should be expecting from the new executive. It's good to have you on the program. It's my pleasure and thank you for having me. And congratulations on the election, the fifth delegate conference of the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria elected you as the president and some others to serve for the next few years. Can you bring us up to speed on what members should be expecting from you as a leader and what more would you be bringing to the table? Thank you very much, uh, Sharon, for having me. Uh, as you are aware, the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria is one organ that uh, uh, is very, very formidable in time when it comes to quality of trade unions in the country. 29th of July 2024, the outgoing administration come to an end. And uh, you know, there's no how you can create a vacuum. Uh, the union doesn't allow that. So uh, a proper delegate conference was uh, organized and I emerged as the president of the association alongside my uh, executives, or the executives of the union. So what should workers be expecting from your administration? Well, as you know, trading is all about uh, uh, ensuring the well-being of members uh, in terms of uh, enhanced conducive uh, atmosphere with which they are going to work and enhancing the, the, the their purchasing power in terms of uh, uh, good remuneration at the end of the month. So this is what we are going to uh, is going to be our first priority. And then while we continue in making sure that uh, the well-being of Nigerian workers uh, is uh, taken to the next level, uh, considering uh, the hardship in the country and uh, the economic realities on the ground. In the last administration of um, the union leadership was first started by Mr. Bola Audu, innocent, and it was end, the tenure expiration um, ended with uh, Mr. Etim Okon. Can you bring us up to speed on what transpired? Yes, uh, Bola Audu, alongside uh, uh, other, some other members of the team, which I am part of it, inclusive of uh, the immediate past president. Tony Timokon, uh, who were uh, unanimously uh, elected to serve for a period of four years, that is uh, from 29th of July 2020 to 29th of July 2024. Uh, along the, within the period after the conference, uh, uh, something very sad happened uh, that uh, has to do with uh, uh, the child trafficking. And vulnerabilities, which we, which the the NAPTIV caught the then president Komebola up to. Uh, he was arrested and detained. And unfortunately, when the arrest came, he the the officials of the NAPTIV and the uh, security uh, officials came to the office while he's holding a meeting with some uh, executives in his office. So he was handcuffed and taken away. So based on that, the union having to be uh, uh, a platform where senior workers, uh, members of the, uh, of, of, of the platform, and uh, you know, it's not going to be possible for you to be parading yourself as member of the union with your leader being arrested on such kind of uh, uh, offense, which has to do uh, offense that go around uh, the country and even it has international relation child trafficking. So we decided that uh, if this happened, Comrade Bola Abdu step aside so that uh, to clear, to see what is going to happen. If you have been able to exonerate yourself from the uh, claim by the NAPTI, good and fine, you can come back. We now go before the public that it was a kind of uh, setup or whatever it's going to be. Uh, but uh, it seems um, he is not comfortable with that, but the organ insist, insisted that he has to step aside. So, and uh, within the period, because he has two, uh, he has four uh, 
uh, for vice president, we decided to nominate one of them, who is Comrade Toby Otemokong, to come on board to act as acting president, pending the termination of his case by NAPTE. Uh The CWC is not the final decision-making body of the association. Uh, we decide, and then we have to present it before the larger house, which is the NEC, to approve. Because as CWC, we don't have the approval power in terms of decision that has to do with the association. So after that, we now call the NEC, comprising of the 36 state branch chairman and the 35 chapter chairman, and the representation across the over 1,000 units we are having. We met, and uh, the matter was ex the delivered, uh, the exhausted. And uh, at the end of the day, the NEC endorsed the acting of uh, Comrade Etim as the president of the association officially, and that uh, since then uh, he's the president until when the matter with Bola has been exhausted. But in between the periods, uh, he displayed uh, and, uh, a lot of anti union activities, which has to do with uh, invite, inviting talks to come to the secretariat and catered away some vulnerables, destroy some items, you know. Uh, which is the least we expect from somebody who happens to be a president of a, a union. So, based on that, the the the, the organs met again and uh, decided to suspend him based on the anti-union activities he committed. Right now, what you're trying to tell us now is that um, the matter is still in court. Um, that um, the um, child trafficking case is still in court. Or what's the information that the union has as regards um, the first reason why Bola Audu was um, told to step down from office? And aside that, you also mentioned the issue of anti-union activities. The judge, there was a judge in Abuja via Zoom that delivered a judgment saying he should complete his tenure, which was to end July 29th, 2024. So vis-a-vis -vis these um, scenarios, uh, what, what has been the feedback from uh, members? How are they feeling about this development? And uh, what more do you have to say about um, the information that the union has as regards the human trafficking case? Well, uh, as I said earlier, the genesis of, the, uh, of his problem is that of the NAPTI, which is still in the court, because he has not been exonerated up to this time. Then... Uh, the the, the anti-union activities also triggered the organs of the unions to take drastic action against him. And the ruling uh, uh, delivered by the uh, NIC, uh, we are Nigerians. We are not under the, uh, the uh, military regime. Uh, once a ruling is delivered and is not in consonant with the real uh, uh, interest of the members, you are you are at liberty to appeal. So when the ruling came, we appealed the matter and we applied for a state of execution, and that's it, that is final. So until when did the appeal call determine the the, the the case, either to be in her favor or in his favor, then the next line of action will be the same. But for him now to evaluate himself as president is something that. Uh, uh, it's impersonation. And I'm even uh, using this medium to advise him to stop doing that or to even invite the security ag uh, agencies to know that uh, this person is impersonating in the interest uh, of the, the, the general public. He should be arrested and be dealt with. Because you are, uh, your outfit attended the program, uh, the delegate conference that was conducted yesterday. Moving forward, now that um, it's a new dawn for senior workers in Nigeria, and there are a lot of activities that affect workers uh, right now on the table. And um, personally, this is almost like a distraction. Um, as the new elected leader, what will be your marching order towards ensuring that everyone speaks with one voice so at the end of the day, the workers and the system wins? You know, as I told you earlier, the Association of Senior Servants of Nigeria is one uh, union that uh, can never be distracted by any person. 
So there is not going to be any destruction. We are all intact. As I told you, the organs, but the neck, the CWC, and the unit are all under the leadership of our uh, CWC, being headed by me as the president of the association. I have all it takes in terms of the in terms of uh, uh, have been the real owners of the union to operate. I am the custody of the certificate of registration of the union, and that gives us the liberty to operate in Nigeria. If you send us this, the, the president, why is the certificate of the, uh, the uh, association? So he has none. Today he cannot mention a chairman either of the branch or chapter that he aligned himself with his so-called presidency of the association. So he's just a minority. As a labor reporter, I know the role that the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria plays towards ensuring a successful execution, impl sorry, a successful impl implementation of um, the consequential adjustment that would arise from the approval of the new national minimum wage. Would you want to shed more light on what uh, would be your expectations, what the association will be doing to ensure that um, in good time, workers start to enjoy not just the minimum wage, but the consequential adjustment which senior workers <laughs> will be expecting. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we have been doing this for quite a long time. The first stage is the approval of the president of the Federal Republic of 70,000 as the new minimum wage, even though that is not our expectation. And then the second step of it is to uh, have a committee that will now uh, discuss and arrive at a consequential adjustment before the implementation of the, uh, the minimum wage. Uh, we are waiting for this to come from the Office of the Head of Service of the Federation, or the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, the committees. We are going to take start the process of uh, up, uh, approaching uh, the relevant agency that is saddled with the responsibility of constituting the committee uh, to work out the modality for the implementation of the minimum wage. Because it's high time, people are expecting this, this uh, implementation to commence immediately because of the situation we're facing in the country. So our first priority is doing the nitty gritty to ensure that the minimum wage uh, reach out to the affected public servant across the country with immediate effect. Some state governors have announced that they might not be able to pay the national minimum wage. Um, do you have any comments on this? What well, should they be focusing on, especially at a time when the federal government has announced to the public that um, they are sending more money as federal allocation than what they used to actually receive before now? Well, uh, we will not waste time on this, but um, just our message to them, to those governors, is that it's impossible and it's unacceptable. We are not going to accept anything short of that 70000 Whoever who will be the state governor that said that he's not going to pay, then he should be ready to leave that position as governor of the state. Because you cannot just be sitting as a governor, uh, receiving a huge amount of money at the end of the month, a salary, and then allowing the civil servant in the state to be willing in uh, uh, people, uh, poverty. It's not possible. We are not going to accept that. It, this, the, 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 there's going to be entirely different approach to this uh, 70,000 minimum wage. In the past, some states have not been able to do the nitty gritty by implementing the, 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 the 30,000 minimum wage. But I'm assuring you, this time around, it's not going to be a tea party. The state governors must, must implement this. And we are not going to accept anything short of that 70,000. The, 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 the union is ready to do whatever, whatever possible within the ambit of the law to make sure that uh, the implementation of 70,000 naira minimum wage is being implemented across the 36 state of the federation and the federal government. Thank you very much for your time. It's my pleasure to have you. Thank you. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.